It does not have to be a new year, a new you. It just has to be a healthier you in the new year, you guys. Make sure you check down below in the description box where you can find the links to TLC products, including the IASOT, the Nutriverse, the Life Drops, the Resolution Drops. There's just so many things there to help you in burning fat and staying healthy. There's even the new immune tea, which I'm going to order. So I can't wait to like, you know, try that. And I hope they get the sea moss back. But I do love the sea moss from Men in Ocean. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a commercial. Yes. Okay, get those TLC products for me and do not forget that my biggest life change has been through Kiara Lachey, Team Lachey, if you can move.com. You guys get cute little outfits from Patient and Amari. You also check out Just Move Supplements because she is helping us with the energy. Okay, this is the energy supplement. Love it. Okay, just got my protein. Gonna get me some after I work out. So, yeah, y'all. Down below in the description box, support, support, support. So you guys are always asking me where I get my glasses from. So I thought I would finally give y'all a real little ad, okay? Firmo, I can't see, bitch. Okay, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. These are my new Firmo glasses here. Super, super cute, right? They are prescription because I'm like totally blind. And I got these matte ones that I think are really dope. And I felt like they would go good with the fact that I no longer have hair. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you guys can use my link and give me credit and get you some glasses from Fermo. Come on in, come on in, come on in, not come on in, not come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead. Hey, everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another Love and Hip Hop Family Reunion Review, y'all. All right, so this episode started off where the last one left off, which was with Judy having a whole temper tantrum, trying to blame everything on Yandy, talking about Yandy is making Mendeecees disrespect her. And then whenever Mendeecees tries to talk to her, she's like, no, Yandy got you disrespecting me and all of this type of stuff. And Mama D comes over. Listen, okay, you got to apologize. You got to say you're sorry to your son. That's your son. You love him. You want him in your life. You got to apologize to him. That's who you was then. And Mendeecees is like, mom, I'm strong because of you. Like everything that I make it through, I call you, don't I? You know, he had to take the red cup, take the liquor, get that shit out of here. Threw it all hard and stuff. And, you know, they had a conversation. Mama D was overbearing, but I feel like Mama D felt like I have been through these same things. And I understand how you feel. And I want you to know I see you and I get you. But you got to apologize to your son. Because you basically was telling him he was lying on you. When he said that he was in the house with no food. When you know damn well that boy was probably in the house with no food. Especially when your response is to ask about the other people that were supposed to be responsible for your children. And that's just ridiculous to me. Okay. But I'm glad Mendeecees told her at the end of the day, you know, listen, I love you. I'm strong because of you. All of those things because you still love your parents even though they make mistakes and nobody's perfect. But what we not going to do is live in a world of fantasy. What we not going to do is, is diminish our children's experiences because it doesn't coincide with our ego or what feels good to us. Everything that's true is not going to feel good and you just got to swallow that shit. It is what it is. They hug it out. The Bam and Scrappy are taking a very drunken walk. <laughs> And she trying to let him know that, you know, she loves him. And even though they have their moments, it's just a moment. She appreciates him, you know. But he like, but those moments, that's how I'm looking at my whole life. Like, those moments, you know, we supposed to be out here enjoying the beautiful weather. You know, he always put an R at the beginning of beautiful. And it's just way too much for everybody. Like, just, just open your mouth. Beautiful. Beautiful. Open your mouth a little bit more, okay? Anyway. But they was trying to have this serious conversation, but they've been drinking. So it ends in them laughing and looking at all the wildlife and, you know, just going on about their day. Then, dum dum dum, April and Fizzle Pop. Okay, we see April and Fizzle Pop getting into it in his room. It got physical. Security had to come in and remove April from Lil Fizzle Pop's room. 
Um, and basically they talked after the juve and they argued. Apparently they broke up like seven months ago and have not talked since then because Lil Fizzle Pop likes to cut you off. Like, here's the thing. Fizz doesn't want to deal with his issues and Fizz's issues run deep. I think he has issues with his mom. I think he has issues with feeling responsible for his mom and his family at a young age, not being able to have the dream he wanted to have. He has a lot of resentment and a lot of anger that he smokes and fucks away, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's still there and it showcases in the way he handles himself and the way he handles his relationships. He's very vindictive and passive aggressive. And I think it's funny that when Monice was saying this, everybody dismissed her. But now April is starting to understand how Lil Fizzle Pop can be when you're not on his good side. When he's not trying to be with you, he doesn't give a shit about your feelings. And he will throw things in your face and act like you the one tripping, okay? So he found out that she was dating some guy after they broke up and he was bothered by that. So she responds with, well, I know you must be messing with all kinds of females and this and that. You know, tell me who you was messing with. I wanna know, no, no, let me know who you was messing with since you wanna be all in my business. Y'all, I can tell y'all that's how that conversation went. Based on what they both said, that's how that conversation went. She didn't just pull it out of her ass to ask you about who you have been messing with. It was because you had a problem with who she messed with, okay? So he brings up one of his exes who he talked bad about. I wonder if it's Monice, but I doubt it. Either way, that's the thing, women. That's the thing, ladies, people in general. But women specifically, if a man will sit there and talk mad shit about his ex with you, please believe he gonna do it to you with the next bitch. It's a disrespectful trait that they have, where as soon as a woman is no longer of value to them, now all of a sudden you wanna call out everything you ever found annoying, aggravating about her, and make her out to seem like she's the bad guy, so you can make yourself out to be the victim, and you know, and it makes you look good in a situation because that's really all you care about. Especially if you feel like the woman has hurt your feelings or wronged you in some way, your response is then going to be passive aggressive. And I feel like that's exactly what Lil Fizzle Pop did to April on this episode. April is overwhelmed, okay? And she goes to the BAM and Sierra and talks to them about how you know, they were arguing or whatever, but she is so tired of holding men up, being the mom, being the mother, being the, the, the girlfriend, having to get your body back together, having to look a certain way, having to support black men and what they go through. When she said that shit, I'm not going to lie. People could say what they want to, but I was feeling her down to my bones in that moment because I feel like so often black women are expected to bear the load. We have to pay half of the bills, but then we also have to cook more and clean more and take care of more and be responsible for more. And then also uplift and support you emotionally while looking for the emotional support our damn selves. Where is it at for me? You know what I'm saying? So when she said all of that, I totally understood where she was coming from because like that, that is a lot of women's and a lot of black women's experience. And I think because Lil Fizzle Pop has his mommy issues, it very much makes sense that she would always have to be in this role of bigging him up while he in some way is trying to, you know, um, have control of the situation. But the BAM understood it as well. And, you know, that's why I was saying, child, we all understood it. In that moment, I totally understood April's frustration. But I do want to know what secrets that she's hiding for Lil Fizzle Pop. I'm very interested. But Ray J is in his room alone with the dog. No pranky. Scrappy comes in to talk to him. And, you know, it's like time on my hands. Since you've been away, girl. I ain't got no plans. No, 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 no. Do, 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 do. And the sound of the rain against my window pane. It's lonely. It's lonely driving me insane. But I'm going down. That's the vibe that <laughs> Ray J is giving in his room right now. Okay? So he talks about how he's been wearing his ring 
more now than when him and Prinky were together because now they're really going through a divorce and he seems to see his situation so different from Scrappy and Bam and Scrappy is like no I was thinking about divorce I was serious I had had it up to here you know what I'm saying we weren't you know seeing eye to eye I wasn't getting what I needed whatever whatever but Ray J is like listen I haven't slept in the same bed with my wife in two years and I know you don't have that experience and it's not true because the Bam and Scrappy are in the same bed every night but that's also because Prinky has to deal with a level of disrespect that the Bam is not going to deal with. Ray J likes to keep talking about how Princess talks to him. When a woman starts to degrade you and talk to you like that as a black man, I promise you it's because, and I'm, and I'm looking, I'm talking specifically from what I feel and from what we've seen on the show with Ray J is that you have disrespected her on so many different occasions and so many different times before she got to this place of just trying to find every gutter word she can use to describe your fuck ass is because you have brought that out of her. Don't, don't sit there and act like Prinky is a bitch all on her own. She may be, but we all know when it comes to y'all relationship, you do shit for her to feel a way and then you get mad when she responds the way she does. But you still chose to marry and be with Prinky. Let's not forget Prinky has always been throwing water on you and trying to push you in pools. But you know you pushed her, at her ass in the pool. Just like he's always been out here partying. He's always been out here drinking and full out lying with the strippers. He's always been that person. They are still doing the same shit they were doing the first year of their relationship. And to me it does not make sense when people uh, continue to make choices like get married and have children together when they have not fixed any of the issues in their relationship because the problems are still the same <sighs> take some responsibility ray j so y'all game night all right it's game night and sierra glams april up to make her feel better and judy tells mama d that she needs to apologize to yandy and judy is like you right i do need to apologize to yandy i was wrong for that i was you know pushing my issues out on her and it's not her fault she didn't deserve that i'm glad you realized that and i can't wait for you to do that uh ray j and fizz talk about the situation with april and everybody keeps telling uh april and fizz they need to get back together and it's so much love and so much passion just because they arguing with one another toxicity and aggravation does not always mean passion but i do understand when you don't give a fuck you don't even care about arguing anymore okay and y'all arguing and mad at each other and being passive aggressive because there must still be some feelings there okay at least at this moment um i don't know about you know april when she was dating dr dre like i mean but you could be you could have moved on and been with somebody else and still have unresolved issues in a previous relationship and Finn says he knows that april is trying to get closure but you know at the end of the day the situation is what it is and he can't go back you know he can't go back to her he can't get back with her Scrappy got a little candlelight dinner ready for him and the bam, y'all. And it was very romantical. They were trying to have a serious conversation in which Scrappy tries to understand that the bam is just trying to communicate her feelings. She's not trying to like beat him up or, you know, oh, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. But I do feel like I do so much and I need a little bit more help so I cannot be so stressed. So I can focus on you and our relationship and our family in, in the positive way and not in the negative. I'm tired. You're draining me way. So he has to be able to receive what she's saying and not feel defensive. But she also has to understand how it is from his point of view. It's just about understanding one another and changing things in order to make the other person feel better about the situation that's really what it is okay and everything can't be a i'm mad just because you telling me about myself type of situation and people do that you know they get mad just because you telling them it doesn't matter how you tell them they don't want to be told anything so the fact that you telling them that they doing something wrong oh now i'm mad and we're not going to deal with the issue with the problem now we have to deal with the fact that you mad about what i said so that shit is tiring and it's immature Sure. but these wild pigs kept you know coming up looking for food and shit so the conversation got a little scary at some point it's like are these pigs gonna be around us trying to eat our food like you know it was just nerve-wracking but they got the conversation out okay y'all mama d starts flirting and, 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 you know, saying her, her, her cat was woofing woof <laughs> so wolf pussy at uh at the mucinex monster at trick 
Trick said, I wouldn't ride Mama D with a car. And I was just kind of like, what? It don't matter. I know what you're saying. She's too old for you. And I just kind of feel like, Trick, if you can only understand that most of the young girls that you like feel like this about you when you're talking to them. I thought it was hilarious. Mama D was drunk. And I hate for her to embarrass herself in that way. Um, Because I hate when women come on to men and men brutally rebuff them. I just kind of feel like women shouldn't put themselves in situations for men to rebuff us. But I still understand. Sometimes you got to shoot your shot and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't no ain't no hurt feelings. Hey, you just ain't for me. I ain't for you. Um, But ultimately, trick. It's like you should be happy that Mama D won't throw that old snatch on your ass. You should be happy that anybody wants to throw that old snatch on your ass. Okay. But Ray J was sitting next to Trick when she came over there. So he disappeared into the bushes <laughs> when that conversation started happening, y'all. Uh, they playing Uno. So Trina and Paris and all of them are over there having a real heated game of Uno. And April, y'all, April asked Ray J what he and Fizz were talking about. And, you know, he bullshitting her, not really wanting to say what the conversation involved, but that they needed to talk and she needed to go over there and fix it with him. And April is annoyed because she feels like I'm tired of people telling me I need to be the bigger person. So Ray J walks her over there and she says, you know, she kind of goes over there and like, you know, kind of walks back and forth because she doesn't know if she should really be putting herself out there like this after how they got into it. So Lil Fizzle Pop says that he wants closure because he just cut April off, okay? And they were friends before the relationship, right? So they try and have this conversation. And she says that she was mad at some of the things he said, like he was trying to hurt her, throwing shit in her face. And he says, you know, that she feels that way because he's let go mentally and emotionally and she's still in that space. Bullshit. That sounded like bullshit to me. I feel like you don't deal with your issues, but it doesn't mean that you're away from it or over it, really. It just means you've dug a hole and stuffed it in it and then buried dirt on top or weed for that matter. He makes it seem like she's mad about who he was messing around with. And he says that it's not like, you know, she was your friend or something. And when he said that, I was like, how do you not understand that that was a dig? Like you were Omarion's friend and you're telling her that she shouldn't be upset at you messing around with one of your exes who you talked badly about to her because it wasn't one of her friends. Because that would have been fucked up. Like her fucking with you when you were friends with Omarion, her baby daddy. So yeah, it does seem like a passive aggressive dig that you threw at her. And then when she gets upset about it, you're like, I don't know what the problem is. You asked. I'm just being honest. I'm just being real. No, you're not. You're trying to hurt her because you feel a way. And because she's a woman and reacts emotionally, she's the bad guy. And you get to be calm and quiet and high. And now all of a sudden, you're not the one with the issue. That's bullshit. The Bam tries to talk to him and he's upset talking about, you know, she just needs to let it go. It's over. And da, da, da. I'm like, OK, 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 Fizz. OK, April leaves, goes outside, D mics. And she says he's not being honest about his feelings. And he's a bitch ass nigga. And I think we all can concur. Sierra says that Fizz and April are soulmates and they just need to be together. And I'm just kind of like, girl, shut up. Because you and BK shouldn't even be together. And look at you. Letting him drip that Beijing all over your white furniture. Because you know she the type of bitch that got white furniture. But anyway, y'all, the episode was okay. I just, I, I honestly feel like April and Fizz do not need to be together. Okay? I, I don't feel that. <laughs> I don't even know if I feel like they still like love each other or this bullshit that everybody's talking about. I just kind of feel like it's two people who still have issue with one another. I think April did, you know, value their friendship, therefore trying to get to that place with him. But he's still feeling a way and not man enough to admit that he's feeling a way. So he's going to come at her in all these little passive aggressive bullshit ways and not actually deal with the issue. And it makes her look crazy. So I just think it's exhausting. And I think now you should understand what Monice was saying. Because Monice used to tell y'all all the time how frustrating Drew's ass was. And everybody wanted to act like, no, it must be Monice. She's the crazy one. And it's just like, uh, but is she really? But is she really? Yeah, she might be a little off. She might be a little off. But I feel like when people are a little off, they also choose people that are a little off. Okay? Reflections. Reflections. Okay, 
But anyway, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Share this video with your people. I love you guys. Don't forget to check out my, my recent videos, okay? My Bondi Blue Show, my Real Housewives of Atlanta, my Love and Marriage Huntsville, Love After Lockup, okay? All of those things. Check my video page. Support me. I love you. See you in the next one.